Hey guys, welcome back, it's Ripe again in today's video. My new neighbors despised me because I am a farmer. They ended up claiming my property as their own by building an illegal fence on my farmland without my permission. They stole a part of my property, including a house, and I ended up suing them. Here is what happened. Before I get into talking about a crappy neighbor, I want to first talk about my old neighbor who was an amazing guy. I live on a farm property and while it is not huge, I have a nice chunk of land. The man next to me though had an average sized residential plot of land. There was never an issue to the point that we did not even bother putting up a fence to separate the properties with a barrier. I had fencing for animals but that was about it and we got along great. He loved buying fresh products from me and I did not mind when he asked about being slightly on my land when he would have a party. When he moved away I was honestly sad and that was soon replaced by worry of who was gonna move in next. I knew that a lot of residential homeowners would not want to live next to a farm and it could cause problems. Eventually somebody did buy his home and I was wary of them right away. They drove a fancy car and gave off an air to them like they were better than everybody else. I could have been judging people wrongly though so I didn't say or do anything. I just sat and waited to see where the cards would fall. It did not take long before my bad feeling was verified that these people were not gonna get along with me. Strangely enough it did not start with them saying anything to me but instead around me. When they saw me they would talk loudly about how my land smelled horrible and I was dirty. They pointed me out to their kids with comments of saying that they had to do good in school or would end up like the dirty farmer that lived next door. I felt bad for the kids because I knew they could see my animals and they seemed excited about them. I once overheard the small boy asking the mom if she thought I would let him pet my cows. She told him to stay away from me and that I was dirty and probably even dangerous. Side note, he looked like a very good kid and I would have absolutely let him meet my cows. The fact that they weren't actively interacting with me made me feel like maybe things would be alright. That they were passive aggressive jerks but were not gonna cause any actual problems. But now the story takes a weird turn away from them and onto me getting hurt. So being a farmer is usually pretty safe but like most jobs if you are not paying attention you can get injured. So one day I was not looking at what I was doing and I ended up cutting my arm on some torn chicken wire. On paper, not a big deal, but I didn't actually see how deep or how bad it was and to get on with the story and avoid graphic details, I would just say that it got infected and I ended up having to spend some time in the hospital. I had some friends going to the farm daily to feed the animals but other than that my farm was empty. I would like to imagine what my new neighbors did next would have happened either way but I kind of hate myself for being in the hospital and letting it happen. I had no idea until I got a call from one of my friends saying that it looked like my neighbors were installing a fence. I did not mind and the less I saw of them the better. However what my friend did not know was where the property line was and the fact that their fence was pretty deep onto my property already. I did not know any of that until I got home and saw their fence for myself. I was really angry about it because they were essentially attempting to steal a part of my property. When I say the fence was deep into my property I just want to try and paint a little picture for you. Their new fence now put the following things on their property. So the first thing that was now part of their land was one of two sheds where I kept a lot of tools and various farming equipment. As well as about a dozen of my trees that were fruit bearing and during certain seasons I would make profit of them. Finally was an area of land that I keep empty for reasons that I had no idea of but it was essentially the graveyard for the family's history of pets. Many a good farm dog got put to rest there and now they were trying to use that land for their own purpose. I have zero patience and needed stuff from my shed so I decided to say F it and just hop over the fence and do what I had to do. My plan was actually later in the week destroying the fence completely but I had some more important things to catch up on after being stuck in a bed for over a week. When I am in my shed going through things I hear police sirens and then the cops coming into the shed and putting me in handcuffs. I know I was on the other side of the fence but it was still my property so I did not believe my neighbor would actually try and call the police on me. Speaking of my neighbor, he was yelling at the cops that I was trespassing and breaking into his shed to steal his things. A screaming match between the two of us went down and the police dragged me off of my own property for trespassing. I know they were just doing their jobs but they did not even listen to me saying to check the land records and see that the land was mine. 
The worst thing of all was the smile on my neighbor's face as I was getting dragged away. I couldn't help myself, so I shouted one last thing to my neighbor, the fact that he stole land that has pets buried underneath it. Being in the right, I filed a lawsuit against my neighbor for the illegal fence and having me removed from my own property knowingly. Not to mention, attempted theft of my shed and fruit trees that he was still claiming belonged to him. He did not ever deny that it was his fence or that he chose where to have it built, just that a fence was there to divide the property and it should be evidence enough of what belongs to who. That's some elementary school logic there and not anything that could hold up in court. So the land records were checked that showed the fence was deep on my property and they were encroaching on my land. However then their story changed to me selling and gifting them some of my land which I denied of course. They had no paperwork to show this and it really didn't help that things in my shed had my name on them. Plus being farming equipment and that family clearly not having a farm. The court found in my favor and my neighbor ended up being sentenced to jail for the things that he did. Now the woman and kids still live next to me but since their husband went to jail I have not been hearing a peep from her. Finally, the fence was removed and a new one put up in the correct spot so I had my entire property back. I know that she's probably telling her kids that I'm a horrible man that got their dad sent to jail, but that's one thing I cannot worry about. And yeah, ripe stars, OP indeed cannot worry about that because these people should have known that if you mess with a farmer, that is exactly what will happen. I would say tough luck. If you enjoy the farmer stories, please don't forget to like the video and maybe even post some star emojis in the comments if you want to support me. The next one is titled Train Revenge. So I take the train to work each morning and then again to get home. I like to sit in the quiet car because it allows me to think and do a little extra work each day. On the train ride home today, a woman in front of me kept talking on the phone even after people nicely asked her to be quiet. The conductor also came through and informed her that she was on a quiet car. The seats we are in have very little support so someone behind you could push your seat and you would feel it. Several riders decided it was not worth it and switched cars. I decided I had enough and slouched far enough so both of my knees were firmly in the back of her seat pushing fairly hard. She cocked her head around and told me to put my knees down. I closed my eyes and fake slept. She got up and moved to a different seat. Actually there was a person behind her and guess what she did? Knees to the back of the chair. People started catching on and she chose a seat with no one behind her. Another rider changed seats behind her and she got some more knees. Then the conductor came through again and was unaware of our little revenge. She got up and told him that people were putting knees into her back and stalking her to each spot. The conductor put his index finger to his lips and said, shh, this is a quiet car. So she moved to a new train car. And yeah, ripe stars, if you have ever gotten revenge on any annoying people in public transport, please let us know in the comments because I would love to hear your story. The next one is a malicious revenge story. A little bit of background first. So I had started working for this particular company in March of 2011. I was hired basically on the spot once I demonstrated my knowledge of the product that I would be working on and started two days later because of a deadline that had to be met. I had a very specific contrast for what I did. I was thrown in the deep end, a sleepless seven days followed by the end I managed to do a decent job on the first of many products. Two months after I started, my direct boss, general manager was let go and not really replaced properly, but a consultant took over their responsibilities. I should also add that the majority of operations were in Australia, while a smaller team operated in the UK, which is also where the CEO was based, despite 80 to 90% of products coming out of our office. Towards the third quarter of 2011, the CEO's contract ended and was not renewed, so the hunt began for a new CEO, who was eventually found and began working also in the UK location. After a very busy 2011, hiring approximately 30 new employees and launching a bunch of new products, business was booming until the second week of January 2012. By this point, upper management could not stay on top of everything, bringing in the COO of the parent company to oversee operations in Australia. This is because we had a lot going on, but the CEO was based in the UK and was new. At this point, we had a group meeting where we learned the future of the company and that operations in Australia would cease on June 30th, 2012, the end of the financial year in Australia. This was followed by management explaining that everyone except a handful of people would be made redundant with pay. 
layouts. The handful who would remain will instead be made redundant after finishing their projects at the end of 2K12. So over the next five months, as operations were slowly winding up and people started to exit the company, I had lined up a few job interviews and one of these was my dream job, based in Europe working in the exact field I wanted to be in. I kept this quiet, telling only a handful of my closest friends at my still current job. The recruitment process took quite a few weeks, many late night Skype interviews, general chats, it was a big job and a massive interview process and towards the end of May I am still in the running for this dream job and by this point pretty much everyone knows wishing me luck. Around comes the start of June and everyone starts to get their redundancy letters giving them 28 days of official notice outlining their pay schedules and all legal entitlements. When I say everyone, I mean everyone except me. I find this very strange but quickly realize it's because if I hand in my notice I won't be entitled to a payout and the company gets to save a few thousand dollars. So that's where my malicious compliance kicks in. I keep quiet and I don't say anything. By about the second week of June I find out that I did not get my dream job and I tell one other person but make sure they don't tell anyone else. So fast forward to the last week of June and now there is just 7 employees including me left in the office alongside the GM, COO and CFO. Everyone except me has packed up their desks and at this point just showing up to basically be social and reminisce. On the second last day I run into the COO, remember he was from the parent company brought in to oversee the winding up of operations, next to my desk and he goes, you must be saddened that tomorrow is the last day, huh? Casually I respond with, oh is it? I know it'll be quiet but I didn't realize it's my last day. He takes a closer look at my desk, still not packed up, has the most confused look on his face and responds with, yeah, it's everyone's last day. Why wouldn't it be your last? Oh, I never got a redundancy letter. At this point, I can see the expression on his face go from, huh, to, oh crap, in the hope that I would get a different job and resign, so I don't get redundancy entitlements among everything else going on. Between the GM, COO and CFO, they forgot to issue me an official redundancy notice. At this point he realizes all this and goes, oh, come and see me in my office in 30 minutes. Half an hour later I go to his office and he is sitting there with the CFO by his side but also kind of behind him. There are a few papers on the desk, I sit down and he starts, sorry, we didn't do this properly at an earlier point but here's all your redundancy paperwork. The first piece of paper is the official letter, I pick it up, start reading and the first thing that catches my eye is the date. It had been backdated to 27 days previously and now this is a two copy letter that needs to be signed by both employer and employee. I put it down and go, that's not today's date. He gets flustered and responds with, sorry we forgot to get you, but the notice was issued on that day. Me, it might have been issued then, but this is the first I'm seeing of it. And you will note it has not been signed by me. Him, yes, but he knew this was coming. Me, I did, but I assumed I would be retained for longer because I wasn't given official notice. Him, what do you want us to do now? Me, put today's date on it and I will sign it. Him, but legally we need to wrap up operations before the end of the month. We cannot do that. Me, you could try to fire me instead, but I don't think Fair Work Commission would be satisfied with your reason of me not wanting to sign a falsified redundancy letter. By this point he's very flustered, meanwhile I'm just laughing my butt off in my head. Him, okay, let me change this for you. He disappears, comes back with another copy with the correct date. Okay, here you go. Me, I'm not signing this yet. Him, why not? Me, well I've got 28 more days of legal employment now. Which means I'm owed an extra day and a bit in annual leave in my final pay schedule. He looks at the CFO and the CFO looks at him and nods in agreement. He changes my payout schedule adding another day of annual leave to it, prints it out and hands it to me. I carefully look over everything and it's all in order now. I sign the paperwork and we both get copies. Him, so what will you be doing here for the next 28 days? Me, nothing, I'm not coming back after today. Him, but you're legally employed for another four weeks, we cannot be paying you for nothing, right? You should help out the IT guy and pack up some boxes. Me, there's nothing in my contract about packing up boxes, so I won't be doing that. Also, if you read my contract, it says I'm employed to work on this one specific project only and any other work outside of this needs to be agreed on separately. And since you sold my project to the competition yesterday and it's no longer at this company, I have no further contractual obligations to fulfill. By this point the CFO is barely holding in his laughter. 
Him, well, that's not fair. We have to pay you an extra month for nothing. Me, that's not my problem. My contractual obligations have been fulfilled. I'm gonna pack up and go home at 5 p.m. Him, okay, please make sure it's not before 5 p.m. I get back to my desk and pack it up in less than 5 minutes and put all my belongings in a box. And then I just sit around doing nothing. One of my colleagues who was remaining for a few more months comes over and asks, what was all that about? I explain everything in detail. He lets out the biggest booming laugh, goes to his office, closes the door and continues laughing. 15 minutes later, the CFO comes over and goes, you don't have to stay until the end of the day. You can take off whenever you want. And this is the story of how I got an extra month's pay due to management's incompetence. And yeah, ripe stars, I cannot imagine how good Good that must have felt for OP to beat his company in such a way. Seriously, that's like the perfect way to get malicious compliance. Paper parked her trailer in my driveway and used it as an Airbnb on my property. I got revenge. I don't mind sharing things with my neighbors, as a matter of fact, I have even shared lawnmowers and pool cleaners with neighbors before. However, we were always on a friendly basis. And even though I was already on a friendly basis with most of my neighbors I shared with, they always asked me. See, recently I dealt with a neighbor who basically turned my property into an Airbnb. It's hard to explain the layout of our neighborhood, but my property is surrounded by other properties and houses and all of the tenants are related. I currently live in Indonesia, I travel around the world for work, have lived in some pretty cool places and with the way the layout of the neighborhood slash properties are, my driveway runs through a trailer in front of me and a house plus trailer besides me. The matriarch or mom of the family lives in the trailer beside me and her children are tenants in the other properties. I will say that I've never really had an issue with these people and they have actually been really nice. However, this changed when a distant relative moved in. To my understanding, the mom owns the piece of property her trailer sits on, but a landlord manages the other properties. Anyway, so a new distant relative moved in and at first it is no problem. She was taking over one of the trailers that sat in front of my house. However, shortly after she moved in, I noticed that the trailer had moved and it was now overlapping property lines and was in my front yard. At first I did not say anything because you know, she just moved in and she had moved her trailer to be able to move boxes in or something. I don't know. Anyways, after about 5 or so days, the trailer was still sitting in my front yard and I had gone over to politely ask her to move the trailer back to its original position. I did not want my front yard messed up nor the dirt road in front of it. She replies in a not so friendly way and tells me to suck it up because the landlord told her she could move the trailer. I hated to be that person but I asked for the landlord's contact number because I was not okay with this. If the landlord thought that part of my yard was overlapping with their property lines, well, then this was something that we needed to figure out. I did not want someone's trailer nor anything on my front lawn. But I found no such luck. The woman claimed she did not have the landlord's direct number, but one of her relatives did. I tried asking the lady that lives in the trailer to the side of my house, but nope. She said she had no contact info on the landlord. Of course, I did not believe this story, but I thought it was a lesson and I decided to wait it out. However, it ends up getting even worse. I start noticing the new tenant, she is a distant slash great niece or cousin, still not sure, hanging out in the trailer with the matriarch and strange people were going in and out of the trailer in front of me. One day when I was out in my front yard with my dog, I saw some people pull up. They must have seen me because of one of the people in the car waved at me. When they got out, I asked if I could help them, but then I saw that they had suitcases and luggages with them. They told me they were the Airbnb guests for the trailer. What? You mean the trailer that was parked on my property? I was so furious and I could not even be mad at them since it was not their fault. So I produced a terrific revenge plan because it was clear that I was not going to contact the landlord anytime soon. So a few days later, after I noticed the Airbnb tenants were gone, I went over and asked the woman if she could move her trailer for the weekend because I was going to have my brother help me bring in some new furniture and he would have to park in front of my yard where her trailer was. She did not say 
much, but she did roll her eyes at me, so I knew she was not happy. To my surprise, she actually moved her trailer, I had my brother come over and make it look like we were moving stuff around, getting rid of old furniture, etc. But we were actually digging holes in my front yard, the plan was that I knew she would move her trailer back and the wheels would get stuck and she would have to either call an emergency tow or some other emergency service. And my plan worked perfectly. The lady and what I assumed was the mother of the family was absolutely pissed. They actually ended up calling the police on me, saying that I set them up and I should be responsible for the damage to the trailer. However, it worked out in my favor because the police said that there was nothing they could do because the holes were in fact dug on my property, so they were at fault for driving onto my property. My plan worked a little too well because all of them moved away. Another tenant moved in shortly after, but I have enjoyed the peace and quiet. There is no Airbnbs being set up anymore. And with this we have reached the end of the video, however if you cannot get enough of my content then please don't forget to check out my endless playlist which has thousands of videos and hours and hours of content. In addition please don't forget to subscribe to the channel and turn on the bell to not miss any of my daily uploads. Thank you so much and I will see you again tomorrow.